Hi guys, got a really great comparison video for you today. It's the best small grow light available 2021. And in this, I'm going to compare 17 different grow lights, all in the sort of 50 to 150 watt um, power range, all suitable for nice small grows, two foot by two foot or 60 by 60 centimeter grow areas. I've got lots of up-to-date LEDs, LED grow lights that I've tested and I'll also be comparing against older technology uh, such as high pressure sodium and um, fluorescence and that type of thing. What I'm going to do is going to compare the efficiency of their systems, the spectrum of the systems and the overall value for money of, um, of the different options that are on the market today. So starting off What's really noticeable testing the most recent grow lights out so the last year or so, and particularly ones that are good value for money, efficient, good quality, is that they're all, they're all chosen to be white LEDs with the uh, little red LEDs for enhanced efficiency. And this is great because previously, the last, certainly the last video I did on, on small, best small grow light was two or three years ago. And there was lots of debate and discussion about what spectrum was best. There was high pressure sodium and blurple lights, you know, the red and blue LEDs and ceramic metal halide and all that stuff. And that's kind of been superseded now and surpassed. The um, best grow lights on the market or small grow lights on the market today are all small LED grow lights. And the best value for money, um, you know, lowest heat uh, and most important of all is the spectrum. They are pure white LEDs, mostly sort of neutral white, which means they've got uh, enough blue in the spectrum. You need a minimum of about six or seven percent. So enough blue in the spectrum to um, to get short, dense growth. Blue affects the the internodal distance or the distances between the branches. So uh, you have enough blue to get nice, short, dense growth. And uh, all of these LED grow lights, these modern 2021 LED grow lights have that as well as green and red and are photosynthetically efficient um, in that they're optimized to have as much red as possible, uh, the minimum amount of blue, as I said, and then filler with green. Um, and this is excellent because previously there was a lot of debates about you know, not just the power numbers as in what the um, the micromole or, or power output of the light fixture was, but then, you know, was there some sort of secret sauce in different spectrums, um, you know, from high pressure sodium or ceramic metal halide or whatever. We can kind of dismiss that and move on and uh, really get down to the, the nuts and bolts, which is, um, you know, horsepower, how much, how much uh, power light these fixtures give out. So, what, what I've done to compare uh, all these fixtures is I've tested them all for that power output, tested them for the usable PPF per watt, and how I derived that is by setting up the light in the test area, all of them in a two foot by two foot or 60 by 60 centimeter test area, and I've looked at the um, amount of light, power light, reaching the plant canopy, uh, the, you know, is represented by the, the test grid, and then test the average power intensity and the power spread over that target area with a quantum sensor, the Apogee SQ500. Once you know that total power output to, the, to a usable PPF output, you then divide it by the watts consumed and you get the efficiency of the light system. There's a couple of results in there by other grow like uh, channels that use the same system. Uh, but our results are comparable. So the Maxi Sun there is by Dr. Coco and the HLG by LED Gardener. So I've included those as well. But we're all using the same uh, system and we'll get very, very similar results. So they're comparable. Now the first um, comparison table I'm going to show you is that efficiency table. And as you can see, for once, uh, I'm able to put up a comparison table for the Migro. Array is up on top, or one of the micro products is up on top, so we're delighted about that. Um, not all of the high efficiency manufacturers that I would have reviewed in the larger grow light sizes, you know, the sort of 400 to 600 watt ones, the commercial type fixtures, um, do smaller grow lights. So there's a little less competition in the high efficiency range, 
uh, for these lights, but delighted to be on top nonetheless. Um, so we got the Array 2 Pro, you can see it there in the center, the two bar light there. Um, designed to spread the light out very wide with the bars, um, and the Pro has 50% more LEDs on it than the Plus Red, which gives it a higher efficiency, makes it more expensive of course, but gives it a higher efficiency. And you can see that the running cost over, uh, over three years is, is about the same for the two of them. We then got the Atrium Lighting Hydro 1000, that's in this quantum board style light. So um, it's got a, it's a flat panel, lots of LEDs mounted onto it, onto the surface. Uh, and Atrium is quite clever. It's got, um, it spreads those LEDs out more densely towards the edges and less in the center. And that gives a better light distribution. There's a lot of less of a hot spot underneath and there's more light distribution out to the edges as they grow. We've also got a clever little um, uh, dimming and controller uh, on, mounted on the back. So you can dim, dim digitally and you also get to, uh, you can connect up the multiple units um, and control them at the same time. So really nice feature from them. Then got the Maxi Sun MF1000, uh, HLG, uh, those two sort of quantum board uh, type uh, flat panel lights. Ponovo 1000, very good value for money. Um, first one from okay, the Amazon base light, I think. Then the Spider Farmer, um, all quite similar around the two micromoles per watt, um, 100 watts. One really to, to point out that I, I particularly like is the Viper Spectra P1000, mainly just because it's value for money. I have it up here, it's the uh, the green one here. It does everything you want it to do, for only a dollar per watt or just less than a dollar per watt, which is unbelievable really. So great starter light. It's got protected LEDs, it's got the um, it's got dimming, uh, it's got a nice form, nice function, um, nice build quality. So I'd highly recommend that one for a budget um, budget light. And then we go down to Besva, Mars Hydro, Unifarm, all in and around the same range, a bit lower in efficiency. Um, so a little bit more heat, a little less, a little more cost to run, um, but good lights in it nonetheless. Got the Fate Electric there, which is a um, home base light. And that really sort of demonstrates that you can still get not great value for money um, in the LEDs, um, even from, uh, from large distributors. Then the Optic 1XL, uh, it's a cob light. Um, cob lights being the um, single source, so a large power light, but in a, uh, we often call it a fried egg type thing. So it's a, a round orange disc, with lots of LEDs in it. The downside with those, and I know because we used to make them here, is that they're quite expensive to produce. Um, so you've got larger heat sinks or at least complex heat sinks to get that heat away from a single point. Um, you've got lenses. Um, and unfortunately the efficiency in that system hasn't kept up with the SMD and they're more expensive to produce. So they've kind of been superseded now for the moment at least. And then in there is the Blurple lights, uh, which again, I haven't included in the main review because there's none there that really are up to scratch. I, I reviewed a lot of them in the past and they would have been in my last best of small grow light review. Um, but uh, they would have been topping out at about 1.3, 1.4 micromoles per watt. And given that, and the fact that they, um, they don't give the optimum spectrum of light, you don't have green in it. You can't see the plants properly. You can't see the health of the plants when you're growing. Um, even though they're very cheap now and they're all over Amazon, still all over Amazon, uh, I wouldn't recommend them. The other downside with them is because of the lower efficiency, they still run in, in the boxes with the fans in them. So they're quite noisy as well. So I would uh, I would not be recommending them anymore. Then you get your high pressure sodium, which um, in the lower wattages are, are lower efficiency than the 600 and 1000 watts. Um, so the 600 and 1000 watts might be 1.3 or 1.4 micromoles per watt. Well, these HPSs are uh, in the 150 watt versions are only about 0.9, which means although they're very cheap to buy, they're very expensive to run. And uh, also will be um, uh, putting a lot of heat into the tent. Then you got T5 fluorescents, which really, you know, they're 
lowest efficiency, expensive, fragile. Uh, Spectrum is okay, but um, I wouldn't uh, wouldn't be recommending them at all. Lots of heat from them too, so um, you know, way way out of whack with the uh, compared to the the modern affordable LEDs. And in order to compare these in terms of value for money, um, one, uh, just to wind back a second, one of the benefits of having the lower efficiency, uh, or sorry, the higher efficiency and lower heat output is that you can squeeze more power into the tent. Um, so you get a higher average power, means you can get a higher yield. They're directly related. Um, so where in the past, maybe 150 watt HPS would have given you uh, somewhere in the region of maybe three or four hundred micromoles average across the tent in a two by two. We can now recommend like 750 micromoles, so you know, almost twice that uh, in terms of average power intensity. This means you can double the potential yield from a small space, which is brilliant for the small stealthy grower. What I've done is I've calculated or done a comparison of how many fixtures of all the tested models so what quantity of fixtures are required to deliver an average of 750 micromoles in a uh, two foot by two foot or 0.36 meters squared area? And multiplied that by the individual fixture cost and then calculated the electricity consumption for each of those fixtures. So um, you can see the, the, the total cost to run these, what are initially more expensive um, high efficiency lights up front is actually uh, less overall when you take it over the three year period. Now that's calculated at um, 14 hours per day and 17 cent per kilowatt hour electricity cost, which may not be exactly right for your area, but hopefully it'll give you uh, a really good indication of, um, of what the comparisons are. So, yeah, so yeah, as I said, I'm, I'm delighted that uh, finally came out on top of one of these lists. Uh, it's nice. Um, I know you're going to have questions and comments. I'm looking forward to them. Please leave, leave them in the section below and I'll leave the links to um, whatever the other tests are for these other lights down below so that you can uh, deeper dive in any of them that you want to have a closer look at. So I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe. Take care.